Nope. Mr. Palazzo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brock, thank you for being here today. Um, yeah, I've, I've known uh, several FEMA administrators, and you seem to be one of the best ones I've heard explain your agency. So thank you uh, for your honest and clear answers. Uh, real quick, you know, it's, I'm from Gulfport, Mississippi, Mississippi's fourth congressional district. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you can relate to that is Hurricane Katrina. Uh, we were ground zero, and um, we took it right on the chin. And it took almost a decade for us to, um, you know, be comfortable in our recovery. And um, the one thing, uh, the Gulf Coast, and not just in Mississippi, but coastal areas, and any, any, any place that lives on or near the water, which is practically the majority of the, human, the population in America, um, the, relies on insurance, the NFIP program. And Mississippi alone is 64,000 NFIP policies. Right. In 2013, uh, Congress you know, tried to um, improve the NFIP program only to... Uh, basically, you know, cause a lot of uh, unforeseen problems. And with that was the drastic rate increases on, on homeowners who had no fault of their own were in the NFIP program because it was a government program and it was only insurance available. Overnight, they were going to see their rates go up, you know, you know, tr double, triple, quadruple. Uh, and, you know, that was a big concern. And Congress acted swiftly. Uh, I think the term was unintended consequences is what mm -hmm. many of us used on the floor. Uh, now, the bill was tied to some other things, such as the Restore Act, which was the delivery of the, the, the penalties from the BP oil spill and a two-year uh, surface transportation extension. And so, you know, the fact that we were going to find a longer-term solution to NFIP, the reauthorization, because prior to there was 16 or more short-term reauthorizations, and obviously those reauthorizations and the fear of it expiring, and you can't get a mortgage if you're required to have flood insurance. So it was affecting home ownership, home building, you know, uh, economic development. It's just the uncertainty and instability of the market. Now, well, guess what? Uh, fast forward, you know, the House has passed a bill which is impassable. Um, it has some good reforms. There's no way I'll ever pass the Senate because it's going to increase rates on homeowners. Uh, and it's going to cause, again, market, market disruption. But, you know, we're for, you know, moving as much of this to the private sector as possible. But there's not a private sector market right now in many areas. And so I guess the thing is, can you kind of tell me, has the, the fact that we haven't reauthorized the program, it looks like we're constantly searching for must-pass legislation to attach even the short-term reauthorization to, is that having any effect in your, in, uh, on your agency right now? Well, the problem, you know, well, thanks to the Congress, uh, those supplementals helped us in debt forgiveness right off the bat. Every time we have a massive event, it, it, it gets to a point where FEMA can't even pay the interest bill anymore on the NFIP program. And so we need to make the NFIP program financially solvent. And I don't have all the answers on that, but sometimes I think we may be attacking it um, in the wrong manner. So, for example, any house in the United States can flood. Why are we just solely focused on these flood zones? And what we learned from Harvey is thousands of homes can flood outside of those zones that were not depicted in there, particularly if street drains are not well maintained or the built environment changes the flood zone quicker than the mapping changes. And so every house can flood. I often, you know, we're working until there's a play to fix. I'm working, you know, and, and my mitigation guys are working with the private industry through reinsurance. And I believe that we, you know, we, we've offset some of that cost and saved taxpayers over $700 million most recently with getting them to back us up through reinsurance. The thing about NFIP and what runs through my mind, and we would have to talk to the private sector to start dialogue, but why is flood insurance not connected to every insurance policy in America? Why is there not an all hazards <laughs> insurance policy every time you buy a house and so you reduce the cost you spread it out it becomes more affordable and i mean i don't know why we have to have this a la carte system of you got to have fire insurance that you can let lapse if you've paid off your house um you can choose or not to choose to buy an fip flood insurance if you're outside a special flood hazard zone why are why are we not working with the private industry on a more innovative solution of saying can we get to an all hazards 
based insurance package for a homeowner. All hazards uh, sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to be very sensitive of my time. It is a fly out day, and um, thank you, Mr. Brock. And I have some several questions related to mapping um, on the Mississippi Gulf Coast compared to my neighbors in Louisiana and Alabama, and I'll submit those for the record. Thank you.